All right, let's get back out there and get another one. Are you kidding me? As soon as it hit the water, literally as soon as it hit the water, this guy hit. Hey, what's going on guys? So when I was down in San Diego fishing with Maddie and Jeff Lem, having an absolute blast, I took some time and I went into a couple of bait shops. So I'm back in my native Minnesota and I'm sitting in a place that should be underwater right now. I have never seen this river so low like this, but anyway, when I was in San Diego at those bait shops, I picked up some of these hot pink gulp swimming mullet um, twister tails. And I looked at these and I was like, if these work so well on sea bass and other saltwater fish, I bet you these are gonna kill it for the smallmouth here on the Mississippi River. But my experiment is gonna be this. Is a pink twister tail like this going to be recognized by smallmouth as something to eat? Or are they gonna completely ignore this? Obviously, this is an incredibly visible lure but is it going to be something that the smallmouth are going to recognize as food and actually eat? We are going to test this out. So I'm here with my friend Martin. Martin only fly fishes and I only use my spinning reel. So I've got six pound test on my spinning reel on a light action ugly stick. You know, I've noticed on a lot of forums that a lot of people kind of hate on ugly sticks. I've never been able to figure out why. I fish with them, I've been fishing with them for years, I absolutely love them. But if you're one of these people out there that may have an issue with ugly sticks, leave a comment below for me, let me know why. So Martin is going to be here any minute, we are going to gear up, we are going to test out these saltwater swimming mullet hot pink twister tails on these Mississippi smallmouth. <laughs> So you've got this really shallow, I mean, look at this. I'm wading out here in my aqua sandals and I'm ankle high. And then you got this rapids here that goes into deep water. Man, this is the perfect spot for smallies. And I'm casting right on the edge of these rapids here because that's where these fish are sitting in ambush. All right, fish on. Come on in, buddy. Oh, he's running. Woo! Come on up here, buddy. Look at this. Nice little smallie on that saltwater jig. That is a nice smallie here on the Mississippi River using that saltwater jig. Wow, he just inhaled this, so we gotta do a rethread here and get back out there. This could be a really good spot. Oh, fish on! Oh, this one's got a little size to it, or it's in those rapids and just feels like it. Come on in. Yeah, this one feels a little bigger. Man, when they fight against that current, they seem much bigger than they are, but it's about the size of the last one. This is just a little dink, but they have a lot of fight to them. But fighting against the rapids, man, they seem much bigger than they are. Ah, oh, such a good little dude. All right, back in you go, buddy. Oh, Martin's got one on. Nice. Well, in this current, they seem much bigger than they are because you're not only fighting the fish, you're fighting them against the current. And these fish fight so hard anyway. I love small. That's a nice, bigger, small. Look at that. Oh, that is a good looking fish. Very nice. Awesome. Slam that popper. 
So we're not only getting them on the saltwater soft plastic jigs, but look at that. We're also getting them on a fly rod and a popper. That is awesome. Let me get a photo of you with that. That is a, that is a nice photo worthy fish. That's a great fish. That's going right on Instagram. Look at that. What a beauty. See you later, buddy. So when Martin and I fish together, Martin, you always use the fly rod. You never use spinning tackle or anything else. Right. And I always use my spinning tackle. But it's, it's, it's kind of cool to, you know, use two different methods of fishing out here. And we've just, what, nailed four of them in about 20 minutes just in this little stretch of river here. All of this back here is all private property, so the only way to get here is, in, is when the river is low like this, you have to start over there at a park, walk across the river. You can't get to this spot without a boat if the river was higher, but we were able to just walk right across to this spot. But again, all of that over there is private property. You can't access this spot from the land over there. But anyway, that was a really cool fish. Uh, I'm gonna go back over and uh, get out of your casting range. Get back to it? Yeah, let's do it. And I'm bringing it back with a slow, steady retrieve, probably slower than I would normally fish and keep that lure in the water so that it's as visible for as long as it can possibly be to those fish. Not only that, but the lure has a lot of natural action in these rapids here. So there we go. Dang it. That was like the third fish I missed and now I forgot what I was talking about. Look at that, that guy just ripped this soft plastic right off. I got a rethread. There we go, all set. But yeah, the secret is to cast it out there and just a slow, steady retrieve so as it swims across those rapids, it's going to have a lot of natural action. And so I'm doing a nice, slow, steady retrieve to keep that lure in the water and keep it as visible to these fish for as long as I can. In calmer, deeper water, I would just bounce this slowly off the rocks on the bottom. But because this water is moving so fast, I want to keep it above the bottom, just under the surface so that the fish that are hiding behind these rocks come out and ambush it on the surface. So we've been in this rapids area here for maybe an hour, hour and a half. We pulled some really awesome fish out of here, but where Martin is fishing down river there, I see another series of rapids. Again, this river is so low that right now where I'm standing, I'm only in ankle high water. I should be well over my knees, even up to waist high water. This is a really bad year for droughts all over the country, especially here in Minnesota. I have never seen this river so low. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna give this little hole a rest and I'm gonna go down where Martin is and fish that stretch of rapids over there and see what we can get over there. Man, look at this. This is all swampy in here. This is literally, look at this, right in the middle of the river. Ordinarily, I'd be waist high right now. Yeah. All right, I gotta take a break and get the sandal off. I've got a stick or something. What the hell? Look at this. <laughs> there was a fish in my sandal. Oh, I stepped on the poor guy. We could use some dead bait here. How the hell did a fish get in my sandal? just walking across the river. I can't believe that this little fish swam under my foot in my sandal and I stepped on him. That's crazy. Man, but look at this. I'm in the middle of the Mississippi River walking in ankle high water. I have never been able to walk across the Mississippi like this before. Man, this is some low water. And that can work to our advantage and it can work to our disadvantage because all we really need to do to find these fish is find a rapids area that goes into deeper water and because the water is so shallow all over this entire river all those fish are going to be stacked in that deeper water all we need to do is walk up and down this river system and find that deeper water there's a couple of submerged rocks in here and hopefully there's a big smallie hiding behind them fish hiding right behind oh nice jump Hiding right behind that rock, exactly where I expected him. 
Come on in here, Chubster. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> he ran right between my legs! <laughs> <laughs> Come on up here. Oh, this is a nice bass. <laughs> that guy went right between my legs. That is a nice big bass. Look at that. Ah. Got hooked in the hand. No big deal. That is a nice bass. Not a monster, but man, did he give me a good run. Oh, man. He was right behind that rock over there, exactly where I imagined him to be. Get him back in the river here. And he can go right back between my legs. There we go. Woo! Man, that's awesome. Oh, man, that was fun. But look at that. I'm bleeding a little bit. No big deal. But, man, he just ripped this soft plastic apart. That guy's retired. And I am going to re-thread and get back out there. All right. Let's get back out there and get another one. Are you kidding me? As soon as it hit the water. Literally, as soon as it hit the water, this guy hit. This is insane. Whoa! Nice jump. Come on, buddy. Oh, he's tangled up. Oh, shit. He just tangled me up right here. There's a little branch right here with a bunch of riprap on it. He tangled me up in it and snapped me clean. Ah, oh, damn it. That was a nice fish, too. Ah. Well guys, it's the middle of the day. The fishing is just completely turned off. We're gonna call it a day, but man, what a morning. You know, when I was down at that bait shop in San Diego and I bought this pack, I was really pessimistic on if this would actually work here in Minnesota on these smallies. Was this going to be something that they were going to see as food and attack and boy did they ever you know guys you don't need to live by an ocean to get saltwater lures like this obviously you can buy them online at any shop i bet cabela's has these bass pro shops will probably have these but you know if you want to catch more smallies you really kind of have to think outside the box you have to well fish outside the box and so when you see something like this that is meant for again saltwater fish Think about what else these guys could catch in your area. I bet you these guys would catch largemouth bass. I bet these guys would catch walleyes. It's very visible and it's not something that we often consider using as our go-to baits for bass or walleyes or whatever. These guys really proved their worth out here. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I really hope that this video helped you guys catch more smallies in whatever river system you guys fish. And until the next fishing adventure, fish the planet and rattle on.